Hello! Welcome to my studio. I'm Julie Torrens. If you are new, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. So today, I am going to be starting on a new journal cover. And so I've got my scraps of neutrals or color, you know, that's no, no real color. Um, I do have some craft paper in there and then text and book pages and some music note pages um, to start. And I'm going to be starting a journal. So I thought you might enjoy coming along with me to work on the journal cover. So the way, well, what I first, what I have is a cereal box. And I went ahead and went over it all with a emery board. It's a one like this. And I just rubbed it all over to get, just knock that shine off so that glues and mediums are willing to sink in. And now the inside is porous and fine. So that'll be good. And what I'd like is for the journal to, it'll be this big. So you can kind of see there what it's like. And then I want this to fold over. And then I'm going to put one of those uh, closures, you know, where you make a figure eight with some thread or some string. So that's my plan. And the spine, as you can see, is a little bit wider. And I want to have three signatures. So three bundles of paper. And what this is going to be is um, an art journal. And then I've got the next couple of steps after I get the cover on. And we'll just see how far we can get. So what I want to do is cover this whole thing in the neutral papers. And then I have some of the distress stains. And I got these in one of those mystery packs from Ranger. Highly recommend them um, because it was sure a wonderful deal for me. This one is called Mermaid Lagoon. It looks like a phthalo blue, but it really is um, more more delicate. I like I like it, and I don't want this background to be va 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 voom. I want this uh, cover to be a little more subtle. Now this is abandoned coral, uh, just a little bit more oomph to it, but it's still an, it's a nice color. And then this one now some of these came in a pump bottle. Some of them came in a dauber. And the ones that came with the dauber top, I just rebottled them into, from the grocery store, some little misters, and these were five for a dollar. But this one is vintage photo distress stain. So that's what I'm gonna use to color it. But first we've gotta get the paper down. So I've got my glue sticks, I've got my glue book, I've got these papers, so let's get going. Now I would like these papers to wrap around. So I'm going to probably work like starting in the corners and then work around the edges and then do the middle. And then on the seams where the book is going to be folding, like here's one, here's one. I want to be sure that my papers are covering well not just way over on the edge because then when you go to fold it this will want to pop up so i want to be sure that on all of these creases that i have a generous amount of paper on each side and i do plan on using a little bit larger sheets of paper so again let's get started this is my glue book i have some paper towels um, i have my corner rounder. I just don't know how much of all this we're going to be using, but it's here if we need it. All right. I'm going to just slide this over a bit. And there. I believe you can see that well. And we're going to just get started on gluing. Here's one of those seams. But even if I work on a corner, I still have a good amount of paper on the, on the, over that seam. So we'll be fine. Okay. So, what is happening in your art world? Have you been working on a, any journals or maybe working in a journal? That would be great. Maybe you're working in a sketchbook or 
making some artist trading cards. Always fun. I'm interested. What is it you're working on? I don't know if any of you watch Lindsay at the Frugal Crafter, but today is Sunday. By the time this video comes out, the video I'm talking about will be out because I think she said Monday she'll be posting it, but she's doing a review on the Stabilo Woodies, which if you've been following me any length of time, you know I just love my, my Stabilo Woodies. And so I'm excited to see she's never used them. She said there is a they are as expensive or more expensive than the Karen Dosh Neo Color 2s, which are a very popular, uh, I would call it like a, a pastel or an art crayon. I know that it's water soluble. Um, and I know that they're very popular, so I'm interested to hear what our Lindsay, and again, it's the Frugal Crafter. If I remember, I will try to link her YouTube channel in the description, and we'll just have to see. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I was seeing if I could reach mine. No, I can't. Well, maybe before the end of the before the end of this project, we can take a look at them together. But they're they're a type of water soluble crayon, and they're good and waxy, which is one of the reasons why I like them so well. This feels like two sheets. Yeah, it is, and uh, so I like I like the woodies very very much. And one of the reasons, and there's many reasons, but one of the reasons why I like them is you can use them on any surface. So if you're doing like collage and you have magazine pictures in it and you want to put a frame around it or maybe do some shading, all of that, you can do it with the woodies and you can activate them with water and they will go on top of all those shiny slippery surfaces. So far, I've never had a problem with that. So that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I'm such a fan. And I didn't even get those matched up. That's okay. That's okay. Glad we're getting this turned over and there. And this is sticking up kind of strange. You have to just trim that. We'll see. We'll see. There's no situation that we can't figure out together. And let's see. I can put this piece right there. So this journal is being made for a special person. And... It's a she. She's very talented. Very talented. And she doesn't, I don't know, I don't know if she doesn't realize it or if she doesn't agree with that assessment or if she just doesn't have the desire to, I don't know what it is. But I am making for her a journal. And I'm going to be putting all kinds of different uh, art papers in it. There's going to be some watercolor paper. There's going to be some um, book page papers. There's going to be mixed media paper. There's going to be craft paper, printer paper, just all kinds of wide open blank sheets. And I really hope that she will take it seriously and and just doodle in it or whatever, but I'm telling you, she's just so talented. And it's 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 encouraging to see her work. And back in the day, she did a lot, and I'm probably out of the out of your vision. Here we go. Back when scrapbooking was so popular, she would go to those crops and things, and what she created was breathtaking beautiful and uh, she uh, she just she just did a marvelous job and and it was it was not cookie cutter where she just bought the latest and greatest and then just 
slapped it on and called it a day. No, it was all very well thought out, artistically done, and I just loved it. So anyway, enough about that. But I just hope she takes it and and... I hope she runs with this. I hope it's inspirational to her. And you know what? If it isn't, that's okay too. She can use it to make grocery lists. She can do use it for whatever she wants. And I will be happy to know that she just finds a way to enjoy it. Okay, I think that'll be fine. I know that I'm going slow and I seem deliberate, but I think that this could go wrong by not getting the papers wrapped around and by not getting um, the seams, the places, the creases that are where there's gonna be bends in this, if that's not done right, I, I think that it could just make it more difficult and I, and I don't want that. So this is a piece of old, old dictionary and I just love it. I love the color, I love the, the font, just just so, so cool. And I think I'm going to put this one right in here. I want to have some variety. I don't want it to look like just like shingles and where a person can glance at it and know which was the first one I put down and which was the last one I put down just because of the way they fall on each other. So I want to mix it up a little bit. So have any of you worked in a journal or made a journal or something like that? What is your favorite like journal papers? Now see this piece. I would it, it here's a seam so it would need to be in the middle of the seam and that's as far over as I would want that because I want I would want a generous wrap. Maybe you're working in a sketchbook. I love sketchbooks. And I mean, I, even though it says sketchbook or drawing or whatever, I use them for anything. I use them for watercolor. Now I wouldn't do a, a watercolor commission work in it because I don't think the paper would hold up appropriately for forever and forever, but I still really enjoy working on paper like that. It, it, it's kind of the mixed media side of me, you know, it, 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 it creates a, a different vibe and I, I like it. I'm going to flip this over and get some variety going. Now this is craft paper and it came in a package that I ordered from Joann's. And it, I'm, I have yards of it. You would not believe the big old massive roll of this stuff that they use to package what I bought. And I'm just thrilled. So I even cut some to size for this journal and I've got it ready. I, uh, I have a little list and just of what I have already gathered for this journal and the things that I want to make, like this cover. <laughs> um, and you know, there's going to be things in it. I, um, I plan to put a larger manila envelope in it and put some little supplies, like maybe some colored pencil. I mean, I want her to be able to see this thing and right away can grab something and, and start a, a little doodle or a little picture or a little something. I really want her to just feel like she can get to it. I, uh, I'm always a little disappointed, I guess, when I get something like that and if I don't have in hand, what it is I need to, to start working it. Do you know what I mean? When I was a kid, and when I say a kid, I mean even a, a teenager, if I received a gift and it didn't have the batteries, you know, that kind of thing, you know, to get this with all the different types of substrates and papers and I'm gonna have some ephemera in it and some stickers and just all that kind of thing. But, you know, it, you get something like that, but you don't have what it takes to make it work. It can just, I don't know, it can almost discourage you before you're even out the gate. So I don't want that to happen. Yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to let you know 
what uh, what the reaction is to this once I get it done and I'm not on a timeline I there's an it's, and this is not because of a birthday or or anything like that this is just gonna be a random act of kindness I guess but uh, I am looking forward to getting it done and getting it out there I think it'll be great I like that again I don't want to you know, I try to bring the camera as close as I can and so that you can see as best you can. But I know that, you know, different projects and their different sizes and to keep everything so you can see what's going on can be a little bit of a challenge, but I do the best I can. And we'll just take it from there. Some of the settings that kind of widen out your picture and stuff there's distortion and i you know how, how can you watch someone do a project like i'm doing right here if if it's distorted i mean i again talk about frustrating I, that would that to me would would really be frustrating so i don't want or try to have as little distortion as I can. I try to make sure the camera is really quite level so you don't have a perspective issue and just all that. All that kind of good stuff. Now I am using a hardy glue stick and I know some of you have heard me talk about the glue sticks but there's always new people and I use the Scotch permanent glue stick and I like it. Um, not everyone does, but there's other good glue sticks. I'm hoping someone may put in the comments because I'm going to have to be ordering glue sticks again. What are your What is your favorite glue stick? Because I uh, I'm always open to using better than perhaps what I'm using. I'm going to put this here. Okay. If you're looking at glue sticks and it brags about how washable it is and how easy it is to get off a thing, well, that's not going to be a glue stick for this kind of artwork because it's designed to come off. I want one that is not designed to come off. I'm liking the way this is looking. I hope that you do too. I think it looks fun. I think it looks good. I do have some pieces in here that are, oh, how would I describe it? Um, cardstock, not quite that firm, but just heavier than regular paper. And uh, I'm avoiding using that because I like the texture to all be about the same. I think it just is, it, it's better in your hand. It feels better when it's like that. So I have been looking at the journaling by fives. I would like to do that next week if I can. And I haven't been to the dollar store yet, but I was at Walgreens drugstore and they had some and I thought oh well you know maybe I can just grab it here if it was any different than the dollar store one I couldn't tell you why and it was like three ninety nine four dollars wasn't wasn't on sale and I mean I, gas is expensive here in the US so if I could have gotten it all at one time but I do not believe I'm going to spend the gas different than um, the difference between was four or five dollars compared to a dollar twenty five so I definitely am going to keep looking but yeah you need a you know a composition book is is one way to do it that's how I'm going to be doing it because that's the way that Shannon Green did it and so 
the way you kind of prepare your journal, it, it's designed with that in mind. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and find one. And one of the joys of this project, the journaling by fives, is that when you get through the prompts, your journal's done. You, you have created a beautiful art journal and you're just looking at it going, huh, well, not fun. And it is fun. It's a lot of fun. So I hope that you're getting together something so that you can join in with the journaling on by fives. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot, lot, lot of fun. Um, I don't know how many years ago it was that she originally did it, but I, I believe it was over five. So okay, we're getting a lot of that same paper. Let's, let's switch it up again. Now, where is that seam? Okay. Yep, journaling by fives is one of my items on my to-do list, but I try not to have too hefty of a to-do list when it comes to my art because that for me can really take away the joy. Now there's times that I want specific direction. Like if I'm having a hard time with inspiration, well then I, I like a prompt or, you know, something giving me a little direction or a little bit of a launch pad. Doesn't mean that I follow it to the T. It just may, you know, encourage, a, a, again, a, a different kind of, of project altogether. Just don't know. All right. I think that would be good. I'm just keeping in mind because now I've just about got that right here is that seam. I've just about got it covered. So I don't want you to not be able to see. So it's in the 70s today, started out very cloudy. We had rain overnight, which the grass just loves. Um, but a lot of pollen, a lot of tree pollen and other kinds of pollen. So that's why I've got the air conditioning on and my windows are closed. But temperature and humidity wise, it would be awfully nice. I just can't afford right now to get a sniffle from allergies. Okay, well, I'm going to turn this around because, and I'm going to show you this side. See, we've got it wrapped around pretty well. I'm going to have to do a little something over here. That, that piece got a little bit cattywampus, but that's okay. But uh, I'm going to turn it around. Oh, I hit you. I'm sorry. And I'm going to finish working this way. So when will I get this journal done? Not really sure. I'm not pressuring myself in any way. And I know that I'm going to, well, I mean, I already have started some of the processes because I already have a video on journal making. Now it's not exactly the same, but the stitching is gonna be the same. And uh, some of the other steps are the same. Like I've uh, got the papers ready that are gonna go in it. And I needed to just do some, some trimming on my trimmer and things like that. Well, I know you've already seen that. And even if you're new, you probably are familiar with that. So I'm, you know, getting some of those types of things up and out of the way. I just think it's better. Okay, where's, there's that seam. But you'll be, you'll be brought along for the trip of this. I think it'll be great. I hope so. I hope so. I hope it's not one of those gifts that I really like, <laughs> but that doesn't mean the rest of the world's really going to like it, but we'll see. We shall see.
So if you saw my last video, you may remember that I am being isolated. Wah. So I can't really go anywhere for the next five days. And uh, then I have to wear a mask everywhere I go for the next five days after that. So I've got plenty of groceries. I'm not feeling too bad. And I'm just, you know, getting on. <laughs> no reason not to. The kind of work that I do, the kind of nursing that I do, I cannot afford to c carry any kind of problems to those children. So I am very aware and very conscious of these types of things. And I'm sure to some it seems like, oh, you know, come on, get on with your life. Well, I am not disagreeing, but in my line of work, the little ones I take care of, they don't have a choice, you know? And so to, you know, to say, get on with your life, well, they would love to do that, but they can't right now. So I just don't want to add to their issues. So I am a little bit maybe overboard on the cautiousness, but that's okay. It's okay. And to tell you the truth, at least here in Western Michigan, I'm not faced with any unkindness or, you know, long looks or eye rolling. No, no. So I'm, I'm really glad about that. You know, it, this is my choice and it may not be your choice and that's okay. I do what I want to do. You do what you want to do. And I, I think that's good. I, I'm, and I'm serious. So, so there we have that. But even with all that I've done, I'm still here. And, well, because I am diligent, at least I went ahead and tested and found out that, indeed, I'm not real healthy right this minute. But that's okay. I'll be fine. Besides, it's my second go-round, and I've done all the other things you're supposed to do by the letter. And, and it is what my work wants me to do, but they didn't have to impose that on me. I was already totally into doing that. I realized I left a little hole here, but I want this piece. I don't even know if you can see it, but I want this piece because here's that seam. So I want it in the middle and I can always add a piece to that. Okay, do I have kind of a littler piece in here? I hate to always make small pieces when I have some. I hope that anyone who's here with me, watching and sharing, I hope that you're well and healthy and that your household is. There we go. That took care of that little spot. I think I want another piece of this craft paper. Hmm, I think I'll put it up there. That will be good. How sticky are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I cannot get over that next week starts July and it just feels like I waited. It was March for so long. It was April for so long and even May wasn't particularly great. Although towards the end of the month, we did have some, some pretty nice weather, but we really, where I'm at, we really went from, oh, like summer or from wintry, barely spring to right in the middle of summer. We just, like I had said earlier, the leaves just seemed to come out overnight. The, 
the flowers just took off all, all in the same couple of two, three days. And wow, it's like, ooh, okay, it's here. But now it's going by so fast. Oh, that's okay. Well, this is a very irregular piece. Those do good more towards the middle, I think. And they're interesting. Give you a little something fun to look at. The book that I'm using right this minute is a, um, it's like an accounting book, like financial analysis or some such a thing like that. So I'm using it because it's a great book. It's got a great cover and I don't worry about having offensive topics or words or things like that. You really do have to pay attention when you're putting a book like this together. This is ripped very roughly. And I don't want those bumps. This piece that I'm putting on right now is part of a recipe book, so that's fine. Eggs and flour and water and sugar and spices and just all that kind of good stuff. So do any of you have, that, especially those in the U.S., any plans for the 4th of July weekend? Picnics, camping, fishing, boating, all that good stuff. What you doing? What you doing? I'm interested. I really am. I, uh, I am kind of on, on duty. I work the Friday of that weekend, but then I've got Saturday, Sunday, Monday, those, you know, these are my regular days off. I work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at my nursing job. And so quite a few, well, I don't want to say quite a few, but several of my family members are going to be going out to a cabin in, in the northern part of the lower peninsula of Michigan and uh, they all have beautiful gardens and I said you know I'm going to be here I would be more than happy to water your plants and one of them sent me a, a and I love it it's a it's a great video of this is where you find the the hose bib and here's where the plants are that are going to need it and these are the plants that will get from the automatic sprinkler system oh thank you and in the, in the area that I live in, it's as my son says, everything is 20 minutes away and no further. And it's so true. It's so true. So yeah, some of us are a little closer than that, but yeah, 20, 20 minutes to, uh, to get most anywhere at the most is very accurate. I want another piece of craft paper. I think it gives the eye a little bit of a rest. Or, you know, maybe it's like, wait a minute, there's uh, nothing printed on this. You know, just all that. And this journal is going to be repurpose, reuse. And I love that. I love that. Art journaling, mixed media, it just lends itself to that mindset so well. And a use what you have attitude. I mean, I'm using art supplies that were popular in like the 90s and are still going strong. And, and some of mine are that old. You have to be careful, not everything lasts that long, but an awful lot of stuff does. And uh, 
I just love it. I, I personally avoid a lot of fashion, what I call fashion art supplies, because they are like fashion. They're trendy, they come and go so quickly. But where I am like what, have my weak spot is in color. They, um, you know, different manufacturers of paints and of things like these sprays that I use, they come out usually seasonally with different colors and then sometimes colors are retired. And you can mix colors, sure, but like I think I've said before, turquoise. I have very good acrylics. I have very good watercolor, professional quality. I cannot take either of those mediums and make myself a really nice turquoise. I just haven't been able to do it. So there's sometimes these fashion colors and I, I'm just happy that they're pre-mixed, pre-made, ready to go. I just think it's wonderful. Right, here's another one of those irregular pieces. I don't know that I really have a space for it. Well, I could put it right there. Let's do that. Just to add some interest again, some visual interest. I like color a lot. I like, I always forget, are they called fluorescent colors or whatever, you know, the, that bright, brilliant pink and, and that apple green that's just so vivid and marvelous. Now, most of the time, well, I don't know of any time that they're not, those colors are fugitive and, you know, your better paints and, uh, and companies will tell you, you know, these are not light fast. Um, but, oh, I love them. And, you know, when they're in my journal, it doesn't have to be light fast. Or if it's part of a greeting card. I don't expect people to just save those greeting cards, hanging them on their wall forever and ever. It's, you know, it's not like a, a commission work or something. I, if, if I was doing a specific project for someone, I would never choose a fluorescent color, even no matter what the manufacturer said. I just feel like I know better. They're just, it's just the nature of the beast. So, but I do love color. And you're looking at this all neutral. Well, we're going to be adding color to it. And I want the colors to really pop. I want them to really give off a statement. And so that's why I'm going with the neutral. This is just the background. So, I want this to be interesting, but I want the colors that are coming to really sparkle and shine and not compete. I don't want my background to, to compete with what's going to be on it. And you know, the other thing I like about this process is I can just feel this cereal box getting stronger as I just keep layering on this paper. It's just getting stronger in my, in my hands, under my hands. One piece right here. I think that will work out fine. And I think we have a nice balance. We'll look together at the whole thing if we can. Um, I think I have a nice balance of the plain craft paper and all the other papers that have some type of font or printing on them. I do think that that goal was achieved nicely. Okay, let's just flip this over for a second. Try not to tip everything over on my desk. And there we go. Now, 
I do want to not forget about this. And I just happen to have a nice piece of music note paper. And let's just put that there. No reason to have that be a sticking point later on. Okay. Okay. So I hope that this is making sense to you. I, I realize it's kind of hard to right now because now it's just like a flat piece of uh, poster board. But for as much as you can see of this, what do you think? I think that we've got a nice amount of everything. And I know that we did well over the seams. There's no piece of paper that's going to give us a problem because it's, it's too close to these seams. They're all, they're all covered up well. Now I'm going to be using just some 12 by 12 paper that I have. Do you want to see it? Huh? You don't mind if I get up? Okay. I'm going to get up and I'll show you what I picked up. Okay. What do you think? Now this is a metallic gold and that's purposely why I picked it. It's in a paper pad. I got it at Michael's on sale and so it was like buy one get one free and they were $4.99 big thick pad only printed on one side but some of them have metallic and I tend to use gel matte medium and when you use that product and you and it gets on top of the gold it, it you lose all of its shine it just sort of looks brown so I'm going to be putting this in you know nice and close and I'll be cutting it right at this seam. And then what I have left over, after I cut it, I'll be able to lay in here for strength. And then I've got another piece just like it that I'm gonna put on the other side. So when I get those, it's just a matter of cutting them and gluing it down. There's, there's no magic to that. So, But that's gonna be the middle. I hope you think it's fun. Let me know in the comments. I, I just think it, it's going to be a nice surprise, like a, like a fancy um, lining to a man's suit, don't you think? Okay, so what am I going to do next? I have some gel. Oh, I have color. First, I want to put some color on it. So I'm going to start, and I, I've got this blue because I want it to, you know, kind of coordinate with and I, I want to, so here, I, I don't want to really bend this yet because it, it's better to do it after it dries or things can buckle up more than they would otherwise. But I just want to see, so this is how it's going to go and, and this is the cover. So I'm going to start out with this blue. And I did this before on some ATCs and I like it, where I just give it a spray and then give it a rub so that we get just a little more of a subtle effect. So here we go. And I'm just gonna do, you know, kind of a section at a time. Not, oh boy, always challenging my desk. <laughs> Look at that, Julie, Julie, Julie. Okay, let's put a little more. And just give it a rub. And I realize it's streaky and it's uh, blotchy. That's good. I want that. And some of these papers are just grabbing it and some of them are not. And I like that. And I'm going to run this right off of this corner. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's all right. That's why this is my art desk, not my dining room table. Okay, I like that real well. I'm just going to turn this over. Let's put the lid on this. Looks like India ink. <laughs> now this is the abandoned coral. So I'm gonna just put some of this on. I don't care if it overlaps some, 
but my goal is not to have them all overlap each other. And I am going to be making a book plate for this. I'll show you my start of that here in just a second. But let's get this coral. The coral seems to be a little bit more like it wants to stay in circular plops more than the other stain. And, you know, th those kinds of things are normal. You know, when you've got one type of, a, um, of an ink, but you've got different colors, the colors can act different. They sure can. Okay. You can see this better than I can. I'm close, but... I like it. Now I'm going to go in with the vintage photo. Let's get a lid on this. And I can still go back if I want more of one of these colors. But I'm going to get some vintage photo on here. Oh, I love it. Just love it. I can see little place. Oh, all of a sudden the sun went away. <laughs> Are you still here? Hello? Goodness. I'm turning this around. I want to get some more vintage photo along here. And I am looking at the corners because like I say, the edges in the corners, you know me, I just tend to neglect them when I'm doing projects like this. And it's just not good. Let's get some over here. Okay. We got some dots. We got some splotches. We got a little bit of everything. I'm going to where I can see some places that the paper wants to come up. Is that the only one I saw? Yeah, little one here. Well, a little bigger than I thought. That's okay. Okay, this needs to dry, and it will. And, oh, what am I doing? Put this on here, but you were laughing yourself sick as I was doing that. Um, and then I have, and I'm just gonna put a coat of this, heavy gel matte. So this is a, a gel medium, and it's a thick product, and I'm just gonna be brushing it all over, but I don't wanna do it until it's dry and then that will also help with um, getting down any little parts that want to bump up and it'll just give it a nice overall smooth feel and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the gel medium all around this edge but then I'm going to put the inner parts of this book the the blue metallic or I guess it's kind of purpley metallic this these are not going to get gel matte medium, and they really don't need it. It's the inner cover. So the edges will, but then this is going to get glued on top. And when I get all that done, I will be bringing this project back to you, and we will work on it some more together. All right, in the meantime, I hope this was inspirational. I hope it was educational, helpful. I hope that you enjoyed the time together. Please consider hitting the like, subscribing, ring the bell, maybe share this with someone who you know is doing some handmade book work, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!